Iran relationship in this interview with Wahiga Maur. Allow me to invite you to take a seat, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, you've given us a bit of history of where you and Moi first, uh, in a sense, crossed paths. But for many Kenyans, they identify your sort of political career and, of course, the, pres uh, the president's journey with YK92. Um, talk to us a little bit about the origins of, of YK92 and what Moi hoped it would become. Uh, some youth uh, galvanized themselves into this youth for Kano 92 when the elections uh, were in youth for Kano. I remember June Moi was part of that uh, part of that crowd. There have been questions about the people who worked for Moi, who interacted with him on the political front and even in government, you included, and probably how they made their wealth. How would you say your interaction with Moi was in relation to your business dealings in relation to how you created your wealth? Moi was a very generous person first. He really went out of his way and maybe even some of the traits some of us have of giving we may have learned from him uh, or he may have influenced us in some way. Uh, I remember um, uh, my first interaction with Moi when it comes to what you've just said. A, a, a few of us, university students, we went to see him at one point and we asked him to give us a piece of land in Eldred. And he actually did. And we sold the piece of land. And with that piece of land, I remember I bought, uh, I bought my first car. Was it his personal, pro it was his pro personal property that he gave you? No, it was not. It was the, there were pieces of land that were being given for development mm -hmm. in Eldred Town. Mm -hmm. So as university students, four of us went and he gave us one plot. Because we asked him, say, please help us. So it was that uh, the going for Moi was a political uh, move. Mm -hmm. The place where now uh, a small problem developed between me and Moi was in uh, 2005. The trouble now is when we had this meeting in Eldamaravin, where I declared that I was going to run for president. That is the, 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 the stroke or whatever the they call it. That broke the camel's Correct. back. That broke the camel's back. Mm. Because uh, from Kabarak, I, I thought it was a simple thing. From uh, Lamaravin. So we were about 15 members of parliament. And uh, so we, we, we wanted to pass by Kabarak to, because it was... It was customary whenever we are around Nakuru, we would pass by, have tea, say hello to Mze, have a chat with him. But this time around, we found the gates closed. In 2005? Because when immediately we left this ravine meeting. Mm. So we were told Mze, I said, doesn't want to see you guys. So we left. Then he issued a very scathing uh, statement against my uh, announcement. Mm -hmm. Um, castigating my candidature um, that it wasn't uh, serious, I was misleading the community, blah blah blah. I think that statement was carried by uh, all the newspapers mm -hmm. in the headline that time. So that is when things did not, because later uh, it became obvious that uh, he had a different succession plan uh, than, 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 than the one maybe I, I proposed. Mm. And you mean succession plan post Kibaki? No, no, no. I'm talking about community. Oh, com okay. Succession okay. plan. Okay, okay. You know, I see. Around, around the community. Because I remember subsequently when uh, he went out, he said um, uh, Ruto cannot be the person. You know, you should choose from seasoned people mm -hmm. like Henry Kosge, like uh, 
like uh, Nicholas Biwot and all these other people who are more senior than myself. Mm. They were older. But you know, then, I, my argument then, I remember making the argument that while I respect Kosge, while I respect Biwot, they are my elders, they are senior to me, mm. I didn't want to be a community leader. Those people can be community leaders. I wanted to be president of Kenya. And the president of Kenya does not uh, necessarily mean you have to be a leader of any community. So I said I respect Mzee's position that the community leader should be uh, in the region of Henry Koske, Biwot and others. That's fine and I respect. But what I am going for is a national seat, a Kenyan seat. I remember being people being sent, including all the way to my constituency that time, to try and, uh, you know, talk to people, you know, Ruta should not do this. But then I asked them, I want to know why Moi is against my candidate. Does he want to run? I am willing to step down. I am willing to step down my candidate huh? and support him. Yeah? What is the problem? You know? And if he doesn't want me to run, whoever he wants to run, let him come we compete if he defeats me we will not ever ever again go back there as we wrap up this interview you have talked extensively about your relationship with uh late president moy but many speculate even as he's laid to rest next week about your interaction your role in the program next week and your relationship with uh what some would what many would say is his most prominent son senator gideon moy Moi brought up uh, his family and his family includes his children and I mean biological children. It also includes his political sons and daughters and that is many of us. You count yourself as one of those? Absolutely. I, I think that is one man we, we owe a lot. We owe him respect for what he did, for the contribution he made, for being president for 24 years. He made huge contributions in education and in many other things. And uh, I do not think we should lace that with petty competition or, you know, small talk. So you I think Moi deserves the best. So you Moi don't... deserves a very... And uh, he went back home to Kabarak and went into retirement. I want to take you to because when you look at Moy after retirement, many things have been said about how he spent his time. But a lot has also been said about how his relationship and yours seemingly broke down. Is there a time when you can say that things you were know, never the same after <clears throat> that? Uh, it is true to an extent that. Uh, of course, when um, we got out of uh, when he got out of office, and we went into the opposition, there was a lot of you know uh, witch hunt. You know, I remember at some point uh, we were being told that Moy needs to record a statement on matters Goldenberg, and he either goes to report the statement at. Um, Mutula, uh, Kilonzo Mutula's office, or the police are sent to his house. So as the uh, Rift Valley leaders then, I remember we issued a statement and, and we said, Moi is not going to record no statement nowhere. Yeah? Because you believed he had nothing to say? No, or... because we believed this is a statesman he has done his term. Mm -hmm. He has handed over power in a peaceful manner. Mm -hmm. And the least that anybody would want to do to him was to harass him. That right? Was that not subverting justice? Uh, I don't think say, so. Looking back. Because we, we, no, I don't think so. Because I think it was reckless for anybody to try and uh, harass an old man, you know, uh, of, 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 of Moe's uh, age, mm -hmm. 
if, if you needed investigations into Golden Bank, there were enough people, you know, PSS, ministers, people who had uh, uh, participated in, uh, in, in executing whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt that... Uh, and, uh, and, and not to position myself for anything. Yeah. And again, the question of your relationship with, with his son, uh, that is something you've, you've not answered quite directly. Could that be I think, a I think factor? Let us, I think let us, uh, we, we will have a discussion about our other relationships after we have sent off Mze. As I have told you, uh, Mze is a father figure. He has his family, which, which we must respect. And the rest of us are an extension of his political family. And we would want, with a lot of respect, Mze to be given a send off devoid of politics. When was the last time you saw him face to face? Can you recall? I think I saw him the last time when he came to Eldred during a function of the Catholic uh, bishop then, Corinne. Uh, I think uh, 2016, 17, there about, please help us. So he said, okay, he asked somebody, please uh, help these young people. I know the times have changed, but many would question whether those were procedural ways of, of assisting people to do business. I think I think they were procedural ways. I, I do not think that Moi went out of his way to do something illegal. Mm -hmm. And even if maybe people later went and did things the wrong way, that was not Moi's uh, uh, thinking. Moi just wanted to help, and he wanted to help people within the law. After 1997, and by then we can assume you were quite an insider in Kanu, you begin to hear of talk of a merger between Kanu and NDP, some sort of partnership. What was going, what was going on on the inside? The, the Kanu bigwigs were uncomfortable with the merger, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, at that point, uh, there was an axis called Kabisa axis. This Kabisa axis was uh, made of uh, uh, Kamodo, Biwot, and Saitoti. That was the Kabisa axis. They were uncomfortable with the merger. And then there was now the younger politicians like myself, uh, Sunkuli, and others who could reach Moi. So we, so, so the merger was a complication because n not many people, especially the older people in Kano, did not trust uh, Raila Odinga. And therefore they had reservations as to what is the real benefit of bringing uh, Raila into, the, into this arrangement. Uh, there was this expanded positions. We had now four, four vice chairs. Mm -hmm. Raila became uh, secretary general. And of course, in the process, uh, Saitoti and Kamoto lost their positions. So it, it wasn't quite an interesting uh, scenario, right? So uh, therein developed uh, a lot of resistance. In, 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 in Kano. I remember one evening going to Moi's uh, Cabernet residence because there was too much confusion. Nobody knew exactly what it was. So I remember asking the former president, um, Zay, have you settled on Huru Kenyatta as your preferred candidate or, or there is still a, 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 a room for, for discussion? He told me, I have decided. So we went, picked our uh, bags, and went to campaign. But uh, our confidence was we had Moi on our side. Mm. But we tried to persuade Moi to let Uhuru run an independent campaign, not necessarily chaperoned by him. Yeah? 
because you know it was hurting him because of this project tag that uh, of course many people spread rumors you know Uru cannot stand on his own he is just another you know moi is trying to put in place somebody who he can control and all this came and uh, the way in which uh, we managed the election did not help matters i want to fast forward then because those who read their history know what happened after that to the point when there's a realization that the race is lost and the move to then concede what steps preceded that that, move? that was a very interesting place so uh the first signals we saw that things are really thick is uh, when kibaki got an accident and he was in london and moi had gone to some trip somewhere and then he passes by london to see Kibaki. Yeah. That sent chills, you know? Was this public? Yes. It was public. It was public. So we realized that Moi was actually ready to hand over. Because there was a belief that Moi could not hand over. Yeah? So, but when he went to visit Kibaki, I think they, it dawned on people, including us, all of us, that Moi was ready to hand over. And of course, Moi made that statement at some point and said, uh, him, he's ready to hand over to whoever wins. <laughs> so this myth we always had that in any case it is more to hand over to somebody just evaporated you know so on this so we went we voted and then uh, we, we we came to state house to see this uh, to, to wait for the results so we were there many uh, be what i don't know who many many people canoe people there we were many from across kamodo all these people so we are in a, no no Kamodo had left you know others there were many people here so there is a tv there and the results are streaming mm. Mm. and the numbers are uh, the gap is widening so i remember musa sirma and other people who are sitting here they were beginning to ask uh, these results is Moy aware that these results are coming in this way? And at what point is he going to do something about it? Because somehow people believed... What did he want Moy to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> somehow people believed that Nyayo could do something, some miracle, so that the results could change. So we are waiting, the results are, the, gaps are, the gap is widening. And we were sitting in, uh, in, 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 in one of the rooms there, the big room in State House, there were so many chairs. And the 40 people started to become 30. Yeah. Uh, and then shortly, Moi opens the door. You know, and he, with a lot of force, the door opened. So we stood up. And then he asks me, looks at me and says, William, where is Uhuru? I tell him, I think Uhuru is at home. So he says, uh, call him and prepare the concession speech. He asked, he asked you, you to prepare the concession. Me and Uhuru now to prepare the concession speech. Man, that room, <laughs> that room became dark for a while. I mean, people could not believe that Moi had said, let us go and prepare the concession speech. So I went to the comptroller's office. I telephoned uh, uh, President Uhuru. He was then uh, our candidate. He was at home. I told him the president wants to see you. And uh, he has asked me that we prepare the concession speech. Okay, 
So we prepare the concession speech. And uh, along the way, very decent send-off free of shenanigans. What role do you want to play in that send-off? There, there are many who read uh, possible isolation of the deputy president, whether before he <laughs> passed on or, or even now, Your Excellency. Uh, this isolation talk is petty and it is nonsensical. Yeah. Um, if you want to know my role, go read the Constitution. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that 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 that's uh, what it is. And I will be happy to sit and watch and pay my respects to President Moy as he is given a state funeral that would be my biggest desire to be there just to give him my respects and I, will, uh, I will submit well and good so that is where now things did not quite and, and it seemingly degenerated to a point where about a year and a half ago or so <laughs> you i mean i know you know the incident a lot more than me uh, you attempted to see him in Kabarak and there were many reports about what actually happened that day. We didn't have issues uh, with Moi as such. You know, so, so, after. so what then happened? So this incident was just an isolated incident there and I, and I would rather we don't discuss about it because it is, it is not an incident that uh, you can actually say it has anything to do with the old man himself. I think it has something to do with the handlers, which which then uh, I do not want us to to delve into. Yeah, that's what you're going to say on that matter. On that matter, I think we leave it there. I I, I, I have a lot of respect for uh, Mzemoi. The match he did for us mm -hmm. as young leaders then, the match he did for the country. Yeah, I I don't think we can begrudge him. He he went out of his way. He did his best. He may have gotten things here and there wrong. Mm -hmm. He's a human being. Yeah, he's not an angel. And uh, but he did something for this country, and we should appreciate, we should appreciate the positive it. things that Moy did. The yeah. unity of the country, holding the country together, mentoring many leaders. I don't, I cannot think possibly of any leader today. You know, I think 60, 70 percent of the leaders we have today in Kenya were mentored by Moi at one point or another. Oh, those who thought of him as a dictator because of that style, even how he dealt with the opposition, or those who are clamoring for an opposition. You know, Moi lived in a different era. You must judge Moi against the, the then when he, when he was there. What, what was then, when Moi was in office, it was largely a single party mm -hmm. era across the continent. Mm -hmm. It is after the 90s that uh, there was agitation, not just in Kenya, across the continent for politics to be open around the corner. Mm -hmm. And so we became of that part of that movement. Then, I was a first year master's student at the University of Nairobi. And in fact, because of joining the Youth for Kano, uh, my graduation as a, as a student of uh, Nairobi University master's degree was delayed by almost 10 years because I joined the Youth for Kano and uh, my uh, academics were put on hold. Yeah, and that is how now we became part of this movement to support uh, Kanu at that time to support Do President Moy. What role you were playing in particular? Then I was the executive officer of Youth for Kanu. Mm -hmm. I used to have an office at the KICC, and uh, I used to see people from youth from different parts of Kenya, from as early as uh, seven in the morning, and we used to live there at 10 p.m. And of course, we had the big boys, you know, the Jirongos, uh, the Munyawayakis. Uh, the Samyamwehas and all the other big boys in uh
Your Excellency, thank you so much for speaking to us today at your residence. Thank you, my friend. Even as the nation continues to reflect on the legacy of the late Daniel Turoti Tarabmoy, we want to first give you a chance to pay tribute to him and to send uh, your condolence message to his family. I have done this before, uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, but let me again, on my own behalf, on behalf of my family and many friends who Mzee Daniel Turoti Tarabmoy was... Um, our father figure to say how sad it is that we have lost him a man who made a huge contribution to what kenya is today mm -hmm. and more specifically to the people and the leaders that we are today so my very deep and sincere condolences to Mze Daniel Torochicharamoy, our second president of the Republic of Kenya, uh, a man who I knew at a very personal level, mm -hmm. and